So that is the million identification. Now let's look at if we already have this tag into the packet, then how to assign multiple interface in the switch uh, to different VLANs. Okay, so actually we have a lot of different kind of assignment. We can assign the VLANs by the interface. So actually now we have four interfaces, for example, and we can let uh, one and three into the VLAN 10, and we let the interface two and four into the VLAN 20. That kind of assignment, we call it the interface-based assignment. Also, we can assign according to the IPs or MAC address. So here, if we assign according to MAC address, then MAC1 and MAC3 belong to 10, and MAC2 and MAC4 belong to 20. Also, we can use this um, IP subnet based assignment. So if they have already been assigned different subnet IP address, then look at this, PC1 and PC3 belong to the same subnet, right? 1.x subnet, and 2 and 4 belong to another subnet. Then we can use this to represent VLAN 10, and this one, 2.x to represent VLAN 20. Also, we can uh, assign according to different protocol. So, for example, if these two working on IPv4 and these two working on IPv6, then we can uh, assign according to this difference. Finally, to combine all these methods together, we can use this policy-based assignment. We can combine different policies together, and we can both use the IP address, MAC uh, interface, and MAC address to assign into different VLANs. So this is an example, actually. Interface-based VLAN assignment actually is the widely used assignment. However, they have advantage and disadvantage. So for example, if we assign according to the interface, then you can see the benefit is that they can simply use the PVID to represent the VLAN assignment. This here, the PVID means the part default VLAN identification. Actually, each interface will have a default uh, VLAN ID, and the VLAN ID range from 1, 4094. So if we configure this interface to with this 10 and this one also 10 and these two 20, then it means these two interfaces are in the same VLAN. However, although this is very easy to configure, but if we need to move one PC from one interface to another interface, then actually we need to manually configure the interface again. So for example, originally this interface is for VLAN 20, but when we move this PC here, then this interface should be configured as the PVID 10. Right, so we need to manually reconfigure the VLAN ID. That's the disadvantage for interface-based VLAN assignment. Another kind of assignment which also uh, usually used is the MAC address-based VLAN. So for MAC address-based VLAN, actually we are assigned the VLAN according to the MAC address of the PCs. So we need to give the MAC address of these two PC in the VLAN table. But actually here, the advantage is that if we move the PC from one port to another port, then we don't need to reconfigure the VLAN ID because the MAC address of the PC doesn't change. So they can automatically recognize this PC and know which it belongs to. However, the disadvantage is that they need to maintain a mapping table. The, in this table, they maintain for one MAC address which VLAN ID they belong to. Okay, now we have introduced how to assign different interface into different VLANs. Now we will talk about some detailed things. So one important thing is that for every interface, actually we should not only configure its VLAN ID, but also we should configure its types. 
the interface type. So actually, there are three different interface type, the access interface, the trunk interface, and also the hybrid interface. Typically, this access interface are used for the interface which is connected with the end system, the host. And for trunk interface, it is usually used for the interface which are connected between the switches and routers. And hybrid actually is the hybrid of these two types. They can be the combination of the functions of these two types. Now let's introduce each type one by one. So the first type and which is a very frequently used interface actually is the access interface. This interface is used for to connect with the host. So the uh, rules will be like this. In every interface, we will have a default VLAN ID and every packet sent through this access interface should have a tag, should have a VLAN ID included in the packet. So how to add this tag? The rule is like this. So if one packet goes through an access VLAN with ID 10, then the tag should be added and the VLAN ID equals to 10. And if this one receive a tag frame, and if the tag equals to as default ID, then they can be forwarded up. But if this tag is different from this ID, then this should not be forwarded and be simply discarded. And similarly, for the sending part, it's also like this. If we receive a tagged packet and its tag equals to the VLAN ID, then they will think that, okay, this packet is for my VLAN and I should uh, remove the tag to recover the packet to be its original format and then send to the host. But if there is a different tag, then they saw that, okay, this is a wrong packet. It should not be forwarded to my VLAN. So uh, I should simply discard it. So that's the action of the access interface. So you can see that the access interface actually is used for the interface to connect the host and to assign the tag to the host and confine a correct packet sent through the interface. But the different, the incorrect packet, the packet belong to other VLANs will not be limited to transmit through a different VLAN. Now let's look at what is the trunk interface. Actually, the trunk interface, as we have already said, they should be used in the interface which is used to connect a switch with another switch or a router. So this trunk interface, actually, they should allow multiple, the packets from multiple VLANs go through it. Okay, so look at, think of the previously talked access interface. For example, this is an access interface. They only allow uh, 10 v P, uh, VID 10 packet go through, but this trunk interface will allow both 10 and 20 packets go through, right? How to achieve this? Actually, we can use this as an example. So for the trunk interface, actually they will have two things defined in the interface. One is its default uh, PBID, port virtual LAN ID. Another one is the permitted ID. So that means which VID packet are allowed to go through this trunk interface. So for example, in this example, the PVID of this interface is one. So it corresponding to this one, the PVID is one, but they allow both 10 and 20 go through. Also, it allows itself to go through. So actually the permitted VLAN ID will be 1, 10, and 20. Then if here is an untagged frame coming in, then they should give the default PVID tag into it. So they have one. And if one is in the permitted list, 
then this package can be allowed to go through to forward to the other interface. And if one package has already a tag in it, then they should compare this with the permission list. If it is in the permission list, then they are allowed to go through. But if it's not in the permission list, then they are not allowed to go through. Here, because multiple tags are allowed, so actually multiple packets from multiple VLANs can come through this trunk interface. This is for frame receiving. And for frame sending, similarly, uh, when we receive a package with a tag and this tag is listed in the permission list, then they can simply let it go through it. But if comes a packet and the tag equals to its own default PBID and also it is permitted, then they will think that, okay, this is a package I have inserted previously. So actually here, I should recover it back to be an untagged frame. So the trunk interface actually allows the packet with its own default PVID to be decapsulated and untagged. And